Our team at UNSW has just shown that we can operate silicon qubits at temperatures 15 times hotter than is possible for most other qubits, which need to operate very close to absolute zero. This clears a major roadblock in the development of quantum computers. These computers will eventually be far more powerful than even the largest supercomputers today and have the potential to solve problems of global significance, including designing new medicines to fight disease and developing new catalysts to reduce energy consumption. However, this will require millions of qubits, whereas the most sophisticated quantum computer in the world today, made using superconductor technology, has fewer than 100 qubits. Furthermore, these superconductor-based quantum chips need to be cooled down to one-tenth of a degree above absolute zero, which is minus 273 degrees Celsius. So you need very large, sophisticated, and expensive coolers called dilution refrigerators to keep them cold. Now, if we could build a gigantic dilution refrigerator to cool the millions of qubits needed, it would require millions of cables to read and write the data and the whole system would fill a number of rooms and cost countless millions of dollars. This brings back memories of the world's first computer, called ENIAC, back in 1945. Even then, it's not clear that we could keep such a system cold enough for the qubits to operate. This problem has been kept in the closet in the quantum computing world for years. But now our team, in experiments led by Dr. Henry Yang, has shown that silicon qubits can operate at temperatures above one Kelvin. That's 15 times hotter than they've previously worked. Now, one and a half degrees above zero is still pretty cold for us humans. But in the quantum world, it's almost like living on the surface of the sun. This means that we can use much smaller cooling systems, greatly reducing the cost from a million dollars or more to just a few thousand. Not only will the quantum computer be much smaller and cheaper, by these higher temperatures, the system can cope with thousands of times more heat load than before. And this leads to a second major advantage of operating qubits at higher temperatures. It means we can now operate conventional silicon chips in tandem with the quantum chip. We need these conventional chips sitting next to quantum chips at low temperature to control the read and write operations that constitute the quantum calculations. But conventional chips generate a lot of heat, which is what makes your phone or laptop hot when you use it. Fortunately, above one Kelvin, we can suck this heat out efficiently and our quantum chip can still stay cold. Unlike superconducting qubits, which can only operate at dilution refrigerator temperatures, we've shown that silicon qubits work just fine at higher temperatures, meaning we can now think about building quantum computers with millions of qubits. We've already designed such a chip based on the same silicon CMOS technology that is used to manufacture conventional computer chips. And when built, this will open the way to solve problems of global significance.